I really want to get straight to the point in this video. The real question is how can you take the bebop scale into a modern setting of today? Here I'm playing the first four or five bars of a blues in C. It's filled up with the bebop scale. And you see in this context it's really highly usable. Let's make a short run through what is the bebop scale. The bebop scale is designed so that it hits all the target notes of the chord that is played on. This means that the bebop scale sound amazingly inside the chord. Earlier I made a video explaining what the bebop scale is. If you need more information on the basic bebop scale, I really recommend you to check out the link in the description. Of course you can get really far by downloading the lesson manual on Patreon. I have made lots of licks and exercises in the bebop scale. What I came from, I really love the bebop scale, but I really want a more modern sound. And I would like to use the bebop scale for putting into lines like the blues from before. But I also believe that I'm a bit stuck with it. It pops up in everything I play and takes everything everything down to inside playing. Like this lick, where I'm using the bebop scale when I'm playing outside and when I'm playing altered. I'll get into this lick later in the video, first we need some basics. Let's dig deeper. The basic C7 bebop scale connects the C and the B flat with the B, the chromatic passing tone. The interval it connects over is a major second. We know the result of this getting the one target notes on the right beats. What we also know is that the bebop scale mostly is played on dominant 7th chords, adding that bebop part between the root and the 7th degree. How about we add it to other chords, like here we're adding it to a D minor 7 between the root and the 7th on the D minor 7. Point still being, we need to hit the target notes of the function we are playing. How much do we want to hit those target notes and on what beats do we want to hit those target notes? Because that's where it gets really exciting using the bebop scale on other chords. In this line, the D minor notes are really nicely aligned with the beats. When taking this a bit further, you see that most of our chord notes are aligned with the beats, but that B on the second beat just doesn't hit the mark. What the bebop does here is moving our alignment into the third beat. So hitting that B on the second beat, putting in bebop, hitting that A on the third beat gets us aligned again. We can add the chromatic passing tone between the sixth and the fifth in the scale. And if you look closely, you can see I'm doing the same on the C major chord. Adding a chromatic passing tone between the A and the G gives a really nice sound. Check out this line, look really closely at it. What's wrong with it? It sounds nice, it has nice bebop chromatics. But if you check out the target notes aligned to the beats in the first bar. So I played down that D minor scale, but I'm hitting G7 notes all the way. Maybe not on the fourth beat where I'm hitting that E. And I'm hitting the D on the first beat, that note is both on the D minor and the G7. So it's a tie. What happens when we add these chromatic passing tones, we get the lines between the functions and the chords a bit blurred. You really need to play with certainty when you're playing around with this. What I mean, don't just throw these chromatic passing tones tones in between here and there. Make sure you're hitting the target notes underlining the function you want to play. So you need to know the chord and the function when you're using these extra bebop chromatics. Basically what I'm doing is mixing the 5 with the 2 or the 2 with the 5 and the lines are getting this kind of blurred. Hey, what are you playing? Are you playing G7? Are you playing D? Are you playing D minor? Are you actually playing G7? The really important part is that it's clear to you what you are playing using these chromatics. Hitting the intended target notes on the intended beat. So the trick is to let D minor sound like D minor. Of course the same applies to the other chords of the phrase, the G7 and C major. In the lesson manual I've added all these scale bebop licks that you can use immediately in your playing and train this. I mentioned that I wanted to break free of the inside playing with the bebop scale. Here I'm starting to use alternate changes. This is the B flat 7, the backdoor dominant. On the B flat 7, which is a dominant, I use the standard bebop phrase B flat A, A flat. 
resolving into A on the C major. And on the C major, using the C major bebop, the A, A flat, G. This was a little training. Now I want to add a D minor before that. D minor, B flat, 7, C major. Check out the bebop chromatics I'm using on D minor. I like that little D minor phrase. It's getting standardized into my playing now. And now we're getting there. But it's weird because it gets more and more twisted. But that's the point. When we add this many bebop phrases or chromatic phrases into a line. And I mean control chromatic phrases that hits the target notes we want. The balance between inside and outside playing leans towards outside playing. And when you add the altered sound of that B flat 7 chord, it gets even more outside. What I said, this is an advantage, so we're getting this outside, this modern outside sound. In this line, I'm getting even more weird. It starts out weird with going chromatically up to that F sharp on a D minor, hitting that major third on the minor chord. In the second part, I'm playing D flat 7, the tritone substituted dominant. And of course, I'm using the D flat 7 bebop scale there. And for a little bit in the third bar on that C major, I keep playing D flat 7. And using a little bit more bebop scale, A flat, G, G flat resolving into that E on that C major chord. And a phrase like this really fast takes the normal framework from the normal chords away. Even though we're using the bebop scale, but we are applying the bebop scale differently into different chords, alternate settings. <laughs> When you're working with these bebop scales, you really need to find out what lines fits you. For me, it's difficult when the functions and the chords gets blurred. I really need to know what I'm playing all the time. This comes when using these extended bebop scales. The questions I'm asking myself when I'm playing like this is, are you now playing D minor, are you playing G7? Are you playing G7, G7 also? Are you playing B flat 7? Or did you just invent a complete new thing? So I need to practice this. I really go slow. I practice these extended bebop scales on as many functions as as many chords as I can. I play it slow so I can concentrate on how does it sound and where the chromatics actually fit. I really want to keep the integrity of the chord and the function I'm playing. Training every part individually that I can later fit it into licks and phrases. I'm taking the licks and the exercise into new keys, preferably something that's related to the keys you're already playing in. Going into the B flat 7, that's the backdoor dominant. Or going into D flat 7, that's the triton substitute dominant. Practicing this gives you an incredible overview of the scales and where you put your target notes. And then I insert these into licks. Get the pre made licks and lines in the manual on Patreon and get started on these extended bebop scales. Develop these lines for yourself and get these into your vocabulary right now. To really get under the skin of bebop, I recommend you to check out how Barry Harris and Chris Potter really digs into chromatic enclosures. And check out this crazy powerful bebop technique. Play music, have fun. <laughs>